For a few minutes on April 8, 2024, the moon blocked the face of the sun and a small part of the Earth went dark. Millions of people across North and Central America got to witness a total solar eclipse when the moon passes between the Earth and the sun. A total solar eclipse is a cosmic event where the moon and the sun appear to be the same size in the sky. But because the moon is 400 times closer to us during this event, from our perspective, the sun and the moon look the same size. The eclipse started at the Southern Pacific Ocean on Mexico's Pacific coast and exited over Canada, with 13 US states in the path of totality, a track over 100 miles wide where the moon completely blocked the face of the sun. For anywhere between two and four minutes, depending on where you were along that path, the sky went dark. And if the weather was in your favor, this is where you might have seen the corona, the outer atmosphere of the sun, which is much dimmer than the sun's face. During totality in Mazatlan, Mexico, you could see pink filaments around the eclipse, which could have been the start of space weather. Crowds gathered across the path of totality and across Central and North America, wearing eclipse glasses or watching indirectly through pinhole projectors. Compared to the last total solar eclipse that passed over the United States in 2017, this year was particularly special. It lasted longer and covered more land, so more people were able to witness it firsthand. And the sun itself is actually more active this time around. The sun's magnetic field goes through what's called a solar cycle about every 11 years when it completely flips. In 2017, the sun was closer to solar minimum, a time of decreasing solar activity, which meant fewer solar flares and coronal mass ejections. In 2024, we are much closer to solar maximum, so there's a lot more activity. NASA even likened the sun's magnetic field to a tangled hairball, and in some locations like Dallas, Texas, you could have seen the asymmetrical nature of the corona, an indicator that we're reaching solar maximum. While millions of people put on their eclipse glasses or watched the live stream to see this celestial event, scientists were very busy. NASA sent two high-altitude research planes 50,000 feet above the Earth's surface to chase the eclipse. These jets can fly above the clouds, so the weather doesn't matter, and they can spend more time in the moon's shadow because they're flying at 460 miles an hour. Scientists are hoping to uncover new details in the corona and to learn more about its chemical composition and temperature. Another study is about the ionosphere, or the charged layer of the Earth's upper atmosphere. On the ground, radars in the path of the eclipse were used to analyze the ionosphere, and NASA even launched sounding rockets to study how the sudden drop in sunlight affects the upper atmosphere. Even astronauts on the International Space Station got a bird's eye view of the eclipse as it happened, and yes, they were wearing the proper eye equipment too. For everyone else on the ground, if you missed it, the next one won't be visible from the United States until 2044, but the next total solar eclipse will actually take place on August 26, 2026, and be visible in Greenland, Iceland, Spain, Russia, and some parts of Portugal. So there is plenty of time to book those plane tickets. For more on the eclipse, you can check out our full coverage on CNET.com.